I'm Ari from the Living Planet Aquarium. Today I'm here at Utah Lake, and if you haven't heard, something spooky <laughs> has been going on in these waters recently. In fact, it's happening in places all over the world. So, Robert. Robert? Where's Robert? Hi guys, let's go swimming. California. Haven't you heard about all the algae in the lake? <laughs> no swimming. Oh, that's right, there's algae in the lake. Thanks for reminding me, help me up. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Pretty much everyone in Utah has heard about it. It sounds pretty scary. <laughs> no, no, that's not how algae works. But I bet a lot of people do have questions about what exactly happened and how it may affect them. How about we explore it with everyone? Sounds good to me. Algae is not only a Utah problem. In fact, we've started seeing problems with large amounts of algae in lots of places, including Lake Erie near Ohio, the freshwater systems of Florida, and even off the coast of Texas. These algae populations can cause plants to die and even harm the local animals. What's really worrisome is that the algae can spread very quickly, leading to fears for our local ecosystems. And what about our drinking water? That's a good question, but first, we need to understand what algae is and where it comes from. Absolutely. Let's have our friend Anastasia help us explore this phenomenon. Phenomenon? Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Thanks, guys. You know, algae may sound scary, but it's actually a totally normal organism that you can find in most water systems. If you're looking for it, you can find it in every spring, river, and lake here in Utah. Here at the aquarium, you can actually see algae, but sometimes algae isn't so easy to see. Check out this container. It looks pretty empty, except for the water inside. But if you turn out the lights, the hidden algae inside, it glows. Algae is just another aquatic plant that ranges in size from microscopic bacteria to huge sea plants like kelp. Scientists estimate that up to 70% of our planet's oxygen, which we need to breathe, comes from algae. Not only that, but different types of algae are grown for various reasons, such as for biofuels or even food sources. Wow, she actually makes algae sound kind of awesome. Thanks, Anastasia. But wait, if algae is such a normal thing, then what can make it bad? Like Anastasia said, algae by itself is totally natural and not bad at all. What can cause a problem is when there's just too much of it in a place we don't want it. And when you have too much algae, you get what is called an algal bloom. This becomes a problem because the algae tends to take over an ecosystem, harming local wildlife and possibly even the people who live nearby. This stuff's pretty complicated. Let's break it down and look a little bit closer. Blooms occur when there are larger than normal amounts of nutrients and chemicals available in the water. These are often nitrogen and phosphorus, which are natural substances. But things like sewage pollution, runoff from fertilizers, and having too many nutrients in household wastewater can have an impact on raising concentrations to abnormal levels. Also, freshwater blooms usually require lots of warm, slow-moving water, which is why we often see them in lakes. But there are all types of algae in the world that grow in many different environments. Earlier, we talked about plankton and kelp, and there are even some types of algae that grow in snow and glaciers, causing the ice to look pink. But what was blooming in Utah Lake was a type of microorganism called blue-green algae, or cyanobacteria. That's a mouthful. Yeah, say that five times fast. Okay. Now, what makes cyanobacteria, cyanobacteria so dangerous? What makes cyanobacteria so cyanobacteria, dangerous cyanobacteria, is that. Cyanobacteria, cyanobacteria. What makes cyanobacteria so dangerous is that they produce toxins as part of their natural process. These toxins can harm lots of local plants and animals, livestock we rely on for food, and even our pets. Usually these toxins are dangerous if you drink the water, so staying away from it basically keeps you safe. Yes! Nailed it! What? I finally said cyanobacteria five times fast. Oh, that's, that's great. Now help me here. Oh, uh, where, where were we? Blooms. Toxins, what caused the blooms? Oh, okay. The Utah Department of Environmental Quality concluded that the bloom came from a combination of warmer temperatures, low lake water levels, high amounts of nutrients, and calm water conditions. These factors helped the algae grow out of control. So what can we do about it? Let's see what our local Utah Lake expert has to say. So right now, uh, there's little we can do immediately. But long term, there's a number of ways that we have addressed excess nutrients in some waters. Um, primarily, those have been um, upgrading our wastewater treatment facilities 
Um, they have been um, addressing some non-point sources of pollution such as stormwater and agricultural runoff. And so we try to apply our best management practices to reduce those. Also, I have to know, when can we go swimming again? Well, that's a great question, Ari. Actually, these blooms are difficult to predict when they'll occur and equally as difficult to predict when they'll end. Primarily, though, we have to just wait for nature to run its course and uh, we'll continue to monitor the water body and let the public know when you can go swimming again. You know, humans have a lot of power over the environment. Sometimes these impacts may only have minimal effect, but quite commonly they can cause big, scary problems. No, there's no such thing as an algae monster, but hopefully we can see the connections now between human activities and a possible effect on our local environment. In fact, it's estimated that over 76% of the algal bloom was influenced by various human activities. With increased temperatures and human populations, it becomes even more important to be aware of our potential impacts on the natural environment, because sometimes it can come back and be a problem for us too. The good news is the more we understand how connected everything is, the more we can make choices that will have a positive impact on our environment. That's right. Thanks everyone for joining us today to explore, discover, and learn more about what affects our living planet. Click to subscribe and get a new episode every month. See you next time. Shall we? Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs>